When I was growing up, I suspect that instant was one of the most powerful words in marketing. As products like instant coffee, instant oatmeal, and instant mashed potatoes hit the market, along with products offering instant pain relief and instant Polaroid photographs. Before long, we couldn't imagine watching a sporting event without the benefit of instant replay, or preparing food without the benefit of a microwave oven, to heat up everything from instant soup to instant noodles, instantly. AOL Instant Messaging became all the rage in the late 1990s and was actually shut down in 2017 because it had been supplanted by so many other platforms, such as Instagram. Not only did we take instant for granted, but we began to regard instantaneity as an entitlement. Instant became such a part of our vocabulary that hardly anyone dare raise a concern anymore about instant gratification. And who among us waits for the six o'clock nightly news when we can get up to the minute news on our TVs, our computers, our handheld devices instantly? So I suspect that instant isn't the powerful word in marketing that it once was, as all of our expectations for almost everything have become instant. But perhaps those expectations really aren't all that new, especially when it comes to our expectations of God. I'm reminded of that old prayer, Lord, I need patience, and I need it right away. Near the start of today's gospel lesson, we hear that Having heard that Lazarus was ill, Jesus remained for two days longer in the place where he was. And readers of John's Gospel will know that that place was just across the river from Judea, not more than 20 or 25 miles away. Yet Jesus hears that his dear friend Lazarus is gravely ill and stays where he is. For two more days. This is scarcely the instant response that the sisters of Lazarus were expecting. Indeed, the very first words out of the mouths of both Mary and Martha are, Lord, if you'd have been here, our brother wouldn't have died. Perhaps in a, as an aside, it is worth noting that if you read the text closely, by the time the sisters' message actually reaches Jesus, Lazarus is already dead. Regardless, or as we say in New Jersey, irregardless, Jesus chooses to stay where he is for two more days. Most likely, as the text later suggests, spending those two days in prayer with his father. I suspect that most of us who have reached adulthood, maybe all of us, have found ourselves in a con a conversation with some dear folks who have maybe fallen away from the faith and never had much faith, who took a concern to God in prayer, and God hadn't responded as quickly as they wanted, or in the manner that they had directed God to respond. It's almost as though they gave God his marching orders, and God hadn't saluted the way they expected. And so perhaps the title of this sermon should be God isn't instant mashed potatoes. And maybe instead we should take our cue from today's Gospel reading. It has long been the conviction of sound Christian theology that God, the God of the Bible, Yahweh the Lord God, creator of heaven and earth, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, does not willingly afflict his people does not afflict his people with hardship or heartache or disaster, but rather that when heartache or heartache or hardship or disaster does afflict God's people, God can use those occasions as an opportunity to sharpen and strengthen and deepen and broaden the faith of his people. Putting that in purely personal terms, 
I do not believe that it was God's will or God's plan to disrupt my seminary education or sidetrack my plans to be a parish pastor. I do not believe it was God's will or God's plan to afflict me with testicular cancer at the age of 31. I do not believe that it was God's will or God's plan to cut short the life of our dear nephew Tim during his sophomore year in high school, but rather I do believe that God used each one of those circumstances to sharpen and strengthen and deepen and broaden my faith so that I could serve him more faithfully and more humanely. Without going into any detail, I believe that God took each one of those circumstances in my life and used it for God's purposes. And I've had enough conversations around this place and elsewhere to know that my story is far from unique. Indeed, some of you, even now, may be thinking of times and occasions when this story was your story as well. Putting all of that in more corporate or communal or societal terms without the benefit of 2020 hindsight, pun intended, may not be that easy. But even now, we can see signs of God's hand at work, even in the midst of our current health emergency. Signs of God's hand at work, building faith both here at Atonement and around the globe. But perhaps both personally and corporately, we can take our cues from this week's Gospel as we face the disruptions and uncertainties that confront us all and the hardships that have touched the lives of so many of us. And so we take our cue from Jesus First, turning to his Father in prayer. No doubt praying as he would in Gethsemane, that his Father's will might yet be done. We can take our cue from the sisters of Lazarus, who despite their initial disappointment, never lost faith in Jesus, or in his loving will for them, or in God's eternal promise. Yes, Lord, I believe, Martha declares. We can take our cue from the certainty that Jesus does not stand aside or apart from our hardships and heartaches and disappointments, but shares them with us. Jesus sees Mary and her friends weeping, and Jesus weeps right along with them. We can take our cue from Jesus' direction to his disciples to walk in the light so that they did not stumble in darkness clearly suggests that they and we will not stumble as long as we walk alongside him who is the light of the world as we make our way through life and as he makes his way toward Calvary. Even though all of us might want or expect or even feel entitled to a instant resolution to what our state and our country and our world are now confronting, God isn't instant mashed potatoes. Even so, we can be certain that as we pray fervently to our Father, as we remain constant in faith, as we weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn, as we walk in the light as he is in the light, making our way even now towards Calvary, God can and will use this opportunity to strengthen and sharpen and deepen and broaden our faith so that we can serve him more faithfully and more humanely. Amen. Awesome.